do I create a new shell user account on my web server? Um, a shell user account, what I mean by that is that's an FTP user account that has shell access or secure shell access. And if you're not sure what that means, stick around because I'm going to explain what it is and why you want it. The first thing you ne need to do is you need to log into the graphic control panel for your web server or your web host. Um, and my account is with DreamHost, and so I'm going to go ahead and log in via the panel.dreamhost.com and go ahead and log in here. And here we have the DreamHost graphic control panel. Now, if you are using DreamHost, that's great. You're going to see something very similar to that, uh, minus the critical announcement uh, detail there. Um, if you are using a different shared web hosting service, uh, it's very likely you will be using a graphic control panel uh, somewhat like uh, cPanel. cPanel is a very commonly used graphic control panel. But there's lots of screencasts and tutorials that will show you how to use that. So I'm going to focus on this one because this one's a little unique. Uh, but conceptually, it's all the same stuff. What we're looking to do is we want to create a new FTP user account or a new shell user account. And so what we're doing is we're looking, this is a type of user um, that will be able to upload and download files to our server um, via FTP or via the secure shell. And I'll explain what the secure shell is uh, very soon, so don't worry. Um, so there's a number of ways we can access this. Right here, DreamHost makes things very simple for you by having this toolbox up here with, frankly, the most commonly used um, shortcuts right up here. And you can see the fourth one down here, manage users, add or modify user logins on your account. That's exactly what we are looking for. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And what this brings us to is a page uh, that allows us to manage users. And just to be clear, when DreamHost talks about managing users in this case, on in this context, on this page, they're talking about, for lack of a better word, managing FTP users. Um, and uh, so we want to add a new user. We've got one already called RoboBunny, but let's say I want to add a new one, say for a different person who I want to give their own space on my web server or something to that effect. I'm going to go ahead and click on the button here that says Add New User. And this brings us to a page where we get to make a few choices. The first thing we need to do is we need to choose the type of user account. Now, under normal circumstances, FTP is probably fine. Uh, but for our purposes, because we're fantastic robo bunnies, we want actually shell access. And this is going to allow us to do some pretty cool stuff uh, in some upcoming screencasts. So definitely pick shell. Uh, and that will allow SFTP. FTP plus shell access. And again, trust me, I'm going to show you what shell access means in a few short moments. Um, we need to pick a username. And here they tell you the username. We can ignore this, by the way. Uh, the username must be 2 to 32 characters long. OK, it's got to be something unique. Um, I'm just, because this is just going to be a test user I'm going to set up, I'm going to delete it later. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and call my username test user 2012. Uh, 07. There we go. Um, uh, it's best to only use alphanumeric characters. Um, and here's what I'm going to do. Um, because the hardest part, this stuff isn't hard. What's hard is keeping track of all the information. Okay, because from this point forward, you're going to have a ton of different usernames and passwords to keep track of. So what I'm going to suggest is you just open up a little plain text document or maybe, you know, Evernote, an Evernote page or or something that you can just keep open on your desktop. And we're going to start putting some details here. OK, so we're going to say uh, uh, shell user account and we're going to call this. I'm just going to write down username and then I'm just going to copy this. And this is just going to be really useful. We're going to be able to use this as a little kind of reference document. We're going to put all our names and passwords inside this one little reference document for ourselves. That's going to be awesome. OK, so the next thing is we're going to put a full name. I'm just going to say test user. That's good enough for me. We're not going to pick let, let DreamHost pick a password. We're going to be super cool. We're going to create our own strong password. And I like using strong password generator. And uh, there's lots of different strong password generators on, on the internet, but I like this one. Um, I want to go 30 characters. That's the biggest it'll go. Um, and I don't want any punctuation in it because that's going to be harder to actually um, 
cut and paste. So there's a good password. I'm just going to click this a couple times and that one looks to my liking. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this both and see. DreamHost says, yeah, that's a strong password. You betcha for sure it is. Now I'm going to go back into text edit here and I'm going to actually copy the password right in there. So I've got it copied right there. Let's actually go ahead and save this while we're at it. So I'm going to say uh, important info and I'm just going to save this on my desktop for the time being. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just review. We've chosen the type of user account we want to shell account. Um, we're going to ignore everything else here. That looks fine. That's fine. The username, we've chosen something unique. Okay. Um, enhanced security, you definitely want to make sure this is checked on by, okay, um, it's checked on by default. Make sure it's checked on. Um, we definitely want enhanced security. Security is good. Uh, full name, I've just wrote down test user. And uh, we went ahead and created our own password. Let's go ahead and click the add user button and DreamHost does its magic and adds this user. And notice that the, this little green box is always going to tell you the result of the operation you just did at DreamHost. So the little green box says success and there's a little checkbox here that says hurrah! Uh, successfully added the user test user 2012-07. It will take a few minutes for this user to appear in the list below because notice we don't have it down there. It's okay. It takes a little bit of time. Not too long, but uh, in the meantime, um, we should test this out. Okay, that was pretty simple. There's really nothing else you need to do at this point, but I do recommend you test it out. So what we're going to do is, um, if you haven't installed it already, Cyberduck uh, is a great FTP client, and if you want to actually download it, that is just at, whoops, let's spell this right, cyberduck.ch. And this is a, a, an FTP client that is available for both Windows and Mac. Uh, and you can download it for free. It's completely free and open source. Fantastic little program and uh, my favorite FTP program. Um, so I've got it open right here. And in order to create, to, to test out my new FTP user, make sure it's actually working, um, I'm going to go ahead and click Open Connection. And what we're going to do is we're going to right here, we need to write down the server name. So in this case, um, we're just going to, under server here, we're just going to write down our domain name. And our domain name, I happen to know, is robobunnyattack.com. Okay, and we're going to write down our username here, the new username that we just created, our new FTP username. To do that, I'm just going to switch over to text edit here. And I'm going to just copy and paste this because I'm very lazy and I don't like typing things. Let's copy and paste the password. And I'm going to click connect and we're going to see if it's working. Connect. And there we go. So we were successfully able to log in. There's nothing exciting here right now, but that's fine. The important thing is we were able to successfully log in. If you can't log in yet, it could be a number of things. It could be that DreamHost just hasn't set up the user yet, in which case you just need to wait five minutes, you know, go have a coffee and then come back and try it again later. Okay. If after 10 or 15 minutes, it's still not working, you need to make, you need to go and double check your username and your password to make absolutely sure that you copied that correctly. Okay. Um, let's actually go back to the DreamHost account panel here, the graphic control panel, and uh, let's actually go ahead and just reload this and see, no, we don't want to confirm resolve. Let's, let's just click on manage users again. That's what we'll do. Okay, here we go. See, we've got the new test user right down here. It says the name is test user. It tells us what type. It is a shell account. And this tells us how much um, disk space has been used so far. We haven't uploaded anything at all, so nothing. Um, by the way, if you ever wanted to edit this, like let's say your password just isn't working, um, we're going to click on the little edit button here. And this brings us to a page with, you know, this looks familiar, right? This is, we've already filled in this information, the test user. We've got enhanced security checked on. The user type is a shell account. And this is where, if you have to, you can change the password. You can just generate a new password through Strong Password Generator, pop it in there, hit Save Changes, and then make absolutely sure that you've got the right password and as well as the right username okay and the username is this right here this part right here not the full name but this part right here okay um that's it for now we've tested it out we've created a new user we've tested it out um i hope that that was helpful 
thank you for watching and i'll see you next time.